Okay, this is um, new Ferrari cam belts being tensioned by Ferrari. Um, so my aim is just to do a video where obviously I remove these and get them back to the same tension as they were before. And just like a clavis gauge, I'm taking the reading of the sound and plucking the longest side. Take the engine a little bit. Don't want my hand in the way. 45 degrees, that's nice, that's what it should be. Yeah. I know there's different te tests for doing it, but this is the most accurate, which is why a lot of people have gone over to clavis gauges. There are these gauges that they pinch the belt and they measure the deflection that way. I've seen them sold in the US and they look pretty good actually, they seem very accurate. Then there's the thing with the um, the pulley uh, tensioner, but I don't like that idea. The thing, the thing I don't like about that is you're relying on that spring in there and the amount, you know, and if there's any, obviously you clean it all out, but you're relying on the spring tension in there, so you slacken it in that spring, kind of tension it and then lock it off. You know, rotate the engine and all that sort of stuff. I just, I don't like that idea really. I know it's probably served many people well for millions of miles, uh, but it all hinges on this, the condition of the tensioner. And if it's not in good condition, uh, you're going to have problems. So just to recap, the, the, obviously the correct way of doing this, let me just play that again. I think that's the note I'm going to go with, because it's a nice amount of twist on there. It's on the long air, long, longest run. Obviously, don't do it on the short run, but on the longest run. That's a nice note. It's not too tight. I might even go with a slightly lower tone than that i.e. this one is completely dead because it's so loose. It, it's not even playing a note because it's that loose, you can see it. Like I say, these were done by Ferrari, but I don't think they used a clavis gauge on it. I think they just used an ordinary, you know, the old technique of, you know, loosening this and letting the tensioner do all the, the tensioning. Well, that's fine, but it's all dependent on the condition of the tensioner, isn't it? If the, if the, if the, if the um, spring in there is a bit weak it's not going to tension your belt as much and the spring is 30 years old this tensioner looks newer than that one so maybe that explains why this one is tighter because it's working better and that one's looser you know i mean all kinds of different things come into play here whereas if you do it with a, a clavis gauge technique with this effectively is a clavis gauge technique that is more accurate that has to be more accurate playing that you know Anyway, just my thoughts. That's the way I'm doing it, and I'm putting my uh, <laughs> I'm putting this, uh, my car engine on it. So that's that. Hopefully, that was some sort of help for my ramblings, but hopefully, they make sense. Now, obviously, to rotate the engine, uh, you use a, a, a ratchet, um, and just remember, go clockwise because if you go anti-clockwise, it won't damage the engine, but you'll put tension on the wrong side of the belts and get a false reading potentially on the camshafts. So, uh, you know, they'll line up differently. Well, they won't, but they will a little bit. It depends on how slack your belts are, of course. So um, <clears throat> make sure you go in a clockwise direction. And if you miss the marker, just go round again. Okay, so that's just so you know. So on your bail housing, there's um, a little uh, plate and it's got two little nuts on it. Uh, the trick is, uh, well there isn't a trick, but the thing is not to uh, have any spanners near it or anything like that because uh, if you drop anything down it, you've got to take your bail housing off. It's just under there. It's got two little tiny nuts on top of it. You just undo those little tiny nuts, get the nuts well away from it so you don't drop anything down there, and then this plate comes off. You just lift it up and slide it out. And then you can see your timing marker well, try as I might, there's the pointer, I don't know if you can see it. It says PM 1 to 4, there you go. And there's a little line just before it, and that's what you want to get on that pointer which I've painted red. But like I said, I'm coming at it from a funny angle, so hopefully you can see the pointer. That makes sense, okay. And that's top dead centre. PM is Italian for top dead centre. So just so you know, all the camshafts have a little tiny notch in them with the marker there, I painted it red so you can see it, uh, and the little notches in the camshaft there, and they've all got that, so that helps you time up the cams. 
So the next thing to do is undo the tensioners uh, because we're going to take the camshafts out because we're doing the camshaft oil seals. Um, so I'm just going to undo that. Um, I don't know if they're put on with thread lock. I should imagine they would be. So we can have a quick look. Um, I'll just take it out. I put them on with thread lock anyway. It did, this one didn't feel like it had any on it. Um, no, it hasn't got any on it, which is kind of odd, really. I would have expected that to have thread lock on it. Um, maybe it's done with oil threads. It, someone has deliberately put uh, grease on that. So, hmm, yeah, okay, well, I'll have to check that. Uh, so just to recap, what you do is you undo that bolt in there, which had about 40 or 50 pounds in it, but we'll have to look on the spec sheet and see what it is. Um, then by releasing that bolt, I think he released this plunger here. I'm just going to lever against it, and I think it should move. Yeah, it does. There you go. That's it. That's what you do. Okay, so what you do would be, uh, yeah, what's going to be easiest about doing this? I was going to say what you could do is release it and then tighten this bolt there, and then that would hold it in the slack position if you know what i mean so lever it and then tighten that and then that would lock it in the slack position i don't think i'm going to do that i think i'm going to actually take that off because it's like i said it's just had a belt change and the only reason why i'm doing this is because these seals are leaking which i knew they were leaking but i just wanted to bide a bit of time really so if i take that off there you go that's going to be easier isn't it okay so i'll do that now the other thing is i don't want it to fall out Okay, which obviously, you know. So we're released on the, now by setting everything to TDC, I, haven't, I don't need to use camps, clamps on the cams or anything like that, I'm not worried about that, because I've got a starting point. I know people like not to find TDC and not to find where the camshafts start from and do it like that, I never understood that, because you are, you know, you need a starting point really. If you've got a starting point, you know where you are. I know in theory it makes no difference. Where, what, where the engine is positioned, but it's so much better if you do have a start point. So, there we go. Let me just put that back in there. We put everything back where it came from. We're, we're all cool. Uh, there we go. The other thing I do is I'm gonna mark which side that is. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's different, look, so it's different on the back to the front okay so that's the front that's the back like I say it's a long time since I did one of these so I'm really doing it all again for the first time okay the other thing I saw someone wrote up about removing the belt um, that you know is you couldn't get it out of here I don't know why that was I mean a little twist and lift and it's out um, it must be another variant that I'm not familiar with um, so uh, yeah like I say, these belts should be fine because they've not really done anything. They've only they haven't even done sort of 500 miles. Uh, well, no, they've probably done a thousand, and they and they're only a few weeks old. But I have been cleaning up the engine. I have spilt a little bit of stuff on them, which I doubt would help hurt them. And oil, you know, they have got a bit of oil on them and stuff. So, you know, they're so cheap. Super performance. Get a couple of new ones, even though these are you know, weeks or months old, a couple of months old or whatever, and they're not very old at all. You get the gist, don't you, me wittering on. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna do the other side. Here's another little anecdotal thing. Why am I doing this with a torque wrench? It's just a habit. So when I undo stuff, if I'm not sure what the torque reading is, um, I'll, you know, obviously I know what this is because I can look it up. I don't know it off by hand, but um, my habit has been uh, I had a Lamborghini, uh, uh, an old Lamborghini Miura, and I didn't have um, the, 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 the manual was all in Italian. So it was my habit um, to, when I took things off, what I'd do is mark the position, i.e. that flat at the top there, I don't know if you can see, but at the very top, that top flat, I put a red dot on the top, 12 o'clock position. Then I would undo it, okay, so I'd actually, under it, like that, and again, that's about 50 pounds. And then you do it back up, yeah, 
do it back to the same position and that will give you, because you've effectively freed it, it gives you an idea of what the torque is. If you're, if you don't know what torque readings are on stuff because you haven't got the manual or something like that, you could do it this way. You know, it might get you out of a bit of trouble. I mean, imagine me not knowing the, the um, torque readings on a lot of the stuff. Yes, they do itemize head bolts and key things like that, but certain other things they don't. So you can be sort of caught out um, of not knowing stuff. The funny thing was, back in the time, it was before internet, and uh, I actually got a local Italian waiter to chat for it from an Italian restaurant to uh, translate all, everything from Italian into, um, into English for me. Um, and he charged me the princely sum of 120 quid, I seem to remember in those days. So, yeah, all good fun. There you go, both belts are off. I've also taken off the little tensioner. Uh, which is going to be filled with grease. I'll take this one off as well eventually, but I, I, I'm going to service those both. Uh, so um, uh, I'll just show you how to do that as well. Right, so the next thing is uh, remove the camshafts, uh, because as you know, I'm doing oil seals on the camshafts, hence I'm going to all this trouble. Um, rather than, you know, doing the shim valve clearances with my tool, but I will do a thing to show you how to use that tool. Um, you know, my nice newly painted cam covers, which I'm rather pleased with. And uh, we're going to remove uh, the exhaust side need doing, so I'm going to remove that exhaust cam shaft and measure the shims. I'm going to remove this cam. Now the trick is to remove all of these evenly and don't mix the caps up and don't get them the wrong way around. They are numbered. Um, they're stamped on here, so this one's one, that one's two, three, four, five, and then here you've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And just so you know, it's written upside down, so the stamp is this side and the ten is reading the wrong way up. So don't be tempted to put them that way. Um, you obviously can't, I mean, it's got a little marker there, so you know the writing reads correctly and everything. So, you know, the writing here reads from bottom to top, bottom to top, even though they're stamped upside down. Just a little uh, note there, but the numbers this side are stamped the right way. So one and two and three read the correct way up, if you understand what I'm saying. I'm making this note partly for you, but also partly for me, so I know not to orientate them the wrong way round. But I'm going to put them back exactly as I found them. When you put these on, you oil the threads. So the torque readings are for oiled threads, okay? Um, just to bear that in mind, you don't put thread lock on or anything like that. It's oiled threads only. And I'm guessing that there'll be spring washers here um, to retain these so that they don't vibrate loose. Um, anyway, so um, the uh, yes, what was I saying? Um, you do these evenly. At the moment, I'm just loosening them initially, but the valves are going to be trying to push the camshaft out. So. I would say like this one is going to push from here because these valves are pressed in so it's going to try and push from here so that's where most of the load is. Now the trick what you've got to do is just loosen this evenly all the way across the board and just get ready because it's going to pop uh, here in the middle it's going to you know push the camshaft out. Uh, the other thing to bear in mind these are very brittle these camshafts so you don't want to drop them either. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean that's pretty common sense really, but uh, okay, so I kind of loosen them across the board. Now I'm just going to twiddle as evenly as I can and the cam will just ease itself out. So I'm just getting a few turns on all of these, obviously predictably the ones that are going to be tight are these four here because this is where it's pulling the camshaft out. Um, None of this is that critical. I'm only telling you this because it will help you understand, you know, how this thing comes apart. Because if you just blindly sort of um, loosen it all, it will, you know, I mean, someone told me, I don't know if it's true, but I heard, a, you know, the old boy that sort of taught me, he said, you know, people have broken camshafts in the past because they haven't undone them evenly. And whether that's true or not, I don't know. 
again you might wonder you know how are these cams lubricated of course how does the oil get up here well it goes through it's it there will be an oil journal hole in the in the in the case and the oil will be pumped up from the bottom of the case into the camshaft which will be hollow and then there's a journal here you can see where there's there'll be a hole in this bearing this is how these are lubricated there'll be holes in there and the oil splurges out of those journals and then lubricates the valve gear and then it will run through a drain little tiny drains back down into the sump again um, so Lotus do it they put holes in the actual reverse side of the lobes and that sprays oil around and Lamborghini I think do the same Aston does the same but the Ferrari do it slightly differently so that's how the oil kind of gets up in here it comes up through the center of the crank sh uh, camshaft and then it's in it and it lubricates all these bearings and then it releases it escapes through here and then in turn lubricates the tappets or the buckets or whatever you want to call them the other thing and this is something that people don't always do is remember which side the nuts are by that i mean do not turn the nut 180 degrees so it came off that way don't turn it round and put it back on the other way it's not good practice because what it actually does is it stresses the thread in one direction and then when you turn it around it stresses it in the other direction so you should always put the nuts the same way they came off um, if you can okay so with all the caps off and neatly laid out um, you can actually see the oil things I was talking about um, the little tiny let me just zoom in on one there you go, so you can see the oil feed, and that goes into the one of the journals. And um, you can see it feeds into one of the caps. And then basically uh, it escapes through there and gets into then to lubricate the valve gear. And that's how it works. So now I'll just lift the camshaft out. Hopefully it's not gonna be in the way with the fuel injection. I mean, it just comes straight out in theory. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to kind of jiggle it at an angle, I think, and find a way to <laughs> get it out, you bugger. And there it is, out. Bit of a strange way to do it, but <laughs> never mind. So I've removed the engine cover, it makes life a bit easier. Uh, the camshaft, as I dropped out through that way, I found that by wrestling these pipes up a bit, I could get it out through there, so actually, Next time I'll put the cam belt in, uh, camshaft in through here and just wrestle the pipes out the way a bit. Um, the other thing was, uh, obviously I've done the back camshaft, so obviously taking the engine cover off allows you much easier access. It's, to be honest, it's a real doddle. Getting to the back, it's not a problem, it's nice and easy. There's no problem at all. With that engine cover off, which takes five minutes, it really is an absolute cinch. It's a dream, to be honest. This is a lovely car to work on. I mean, I don't want to say that too soon, but it really is. It really is a lovely car to work on this. They really, really thought it out. You know, Ferrari were very clever in their day, I think, the way they came up with this design. It's compact, you know, it's accessible. Um, and ultimately, well, you know, touch wood, pretty damn reliable, I think, you know, I mean, they are strong, strong little engines. So, yeah, really, really nice. Guys, so the next thing is micrometer to measure these. Uh, you have to spring these little things out. Uh, they can be quite, uh, you know, surface tension sticks them. So you need to get something in there, just a, a little screwdriver or something with a sharp edge, just to pop them. You can't use a magnet because the mag whoop, there you go, got it. You can't use a magnet because um, the magnet will just stick the shim to the thing. But there you go, there it is. But surface tension really holds them in tight, so just to just to bear that in mind, okay? Uh, right, we'll get measuring. Guys, this first one is reading, I don't know if you can see it, it's reading 3.85 millimeters, okay? So I have to subtract uh, 0.2 uh, uh, off of that for my correct clearance from memory. Okay, I've got this one, I <laughs> picked it up. This one is 3.9, okay, and it actually does have 3.9 written on it, so um, this one is actually what it says it is. Uh, there you go, you can see it hopefully. I'll put my hands there and it will focus. 
So yeah, it has 3.9 on it. <clears throat> so you get the gist anyway of what I'm doing here. Um, like I say, try and use a screwdriver, it's probably better. But I just am gonna carry on persevering with my uh, micrometer here because it's getting dark and I would like to try and get this done before it's, it's dark. And uh, I can't find my little screwdriver right now. So there we go, that one's off. This one has four as well uh, written on it, and indeed it's four. So, so far these have been very accurate. Just so you know, when you're using a micrometer, when you measure, use the ratchet. Well, this one's got four written on it. Um, on the back there, it does have four written on it, and it is indeed a four. So, um, yeah, it's reading four. Lovely. Okay, guys, um, obviously camshaft's out. Um, first thing I'm going to do is check, I've checked them for uh, damage or wear, um, and uh, all seems to be okay except for one, which is uh, this one here, which is the exhaust cam on the, the rearward bank. And if you look carefully, you can see there's a little mark here, sorry, there. There's two marks right on where the oil seal goes. When I feel it with my finger, there is actually a, a little bit of a, a ridge there. Um, when I dig my nail in, you know, I can feel there's a ridge there. You can see the oil ways where the oil comes up from the sump, uh, you know, from the oil pump, and then it goes into that oil way. That's the main feed into the camshaft. And then it basically goes through the camshaft and lubricates all the, all the bearings. So here, and then there, and then it bleeds out of there and then actually goes and lubricates the cams. Um, that's what I tried to show you while it was on the car. Uh, so anyway, I've marked them all just to be really easy. So that's exhaust, rearward most cam, and then I've got, um, this is inlet, rearward most bank, sorry. Then this is inlet on the, this one's inlet on the uh, uh, the one up against the firewall, forwardmost bank, and then that's exhaust. Um, obvious differences, as you can see, there's a boss on here. That's because these are set back, uh, set out more than these, obviously, because of the way the cylinders are staggered. Um, okay, so all the seals... I've cleaned these up, all the seals were uh, worn and quite, they're not hard, but they are worn. So it's obviously new seals and there's a couple of little kind of nicks in them and stuff as well. It doesn't look too, uh, they don't look too nice. So uh, obviously change those and then obviously change these rings as well. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. You've seen me doing oil seal before, but I'll show you how to do it. Okay, folks, what I've decided to do is um, emery cloth this because I've looked, emery cloth this, sorry. It's 1200 uh, grade, so it's very, very fine. And um, it's the kind of one that you use for paint finishes. You know, you rub it down and then you polish the paint. So it's very, very fine indeed. Uh, I've looked at it under a glass and, um, you know, you're not going to, by rubbing this, you're not going to, oval this at all or anything like that because it's so fine but what it does do is where the metal has kind of exploded out due to corrosion and that corrosion is caused by the car probably sat for a long time um, with just moisture in that in that seal and it's just eaten you know rusted the metal basically yeah that's how that kind of damage is caused by cars not being used not being driven for long periods of time um, so anyway, what I'm doing is just uh, running it round like that, basically, and that will um, take off all the high points, because if I leave it, it's going to damage the seal. And even though you can see a kind of a witness mark there, I can no longer feel it with my fingers anymore. It feels smooth, and of course the oil will fill that gap. But before, you know, steel um, does explode. You know, when steel gets corroded, it actually it bursts up and actually uh, forms like peaks. 
Um, so you've got to get rid of those because they're what chew into the seal. So um, I think that's absolutely fine. The oil will fill in the rest um, and uh, I think it will be, be okay. I think it's not significantly bad. So, you know, like I say, you can do these kind of things. Um, just be careful, you know, it's not what you do, it's how you do it, isn't it, again? Um, but anyway, that's looking good. I think that's absolutely fine. So the next thing is having cleaned everything up, I'm just gonna wrap these in plastic cling wrap. Uh, the reason being is that um, the pulley wheels are really, they've got quite a lot of corrosion on them and I want to clean them up. Um, I don't want to uh, take the pulley wheels off. Um, it's a bit unnecessary. You know, I don't, I'm not one of these people that believes in making work for myself. I'll probably make enough work for myself as it is, you know, because I want an immaculate looking engine bay. But, um, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, again, you have to take a view on things. You don't want to go overboard with this stuff. Otherwise you end up taking the whole car apart and, you know, end up with a garage full of bits. Um, I knew a guy once with a DB5 that did that. Um, he had the car, he went to a show, he bought the car, he went to an Aston show, saw all these other absolutely immaculate Astons there, decided that he wanted an immaculate Aston too, and pulled it apart. And he pulled it apart so much that there was nothing, you know, it's just a pile of bits. And um, in the end, I think he had the car 25 years. He never ever put it back together again. Um, it just stayed in bits. And so, <laughs> such a shame, you know, because he could have had the use out of the car all because he wanted that immaculate car. You know, you have to be realistic with things. If you do them sort of bit by bit, um, then, um, you know, you're never gonna bite off more than you can chew. You just have to do them bit by bit. Um, I know that sometimes you know you have to do a restoration, take the car off the road, etc. But um, I suppose at the end of the day, it's about having a bit of life, isn't it? You know. Um, the other nice thing about wrapping them in plastic wrap like that, sorry, I'm out of shot. Plastic wrap is it actually makes them a little bit padded, so they've got a little bit of protection because they are quite brittle. So, oh yes, and what I was going to show you is look, look down the end now. It looks horrible in there, doesn't it? It's all full of corrosion and stuff. I don't know if you can see that, but. It's not pretty. So I'm just gonna clean it up, that's all with a wire brush. Obviously another reason for wrapping these up is you don't want uh, any um, debris going into these uh, little holes here um, in the camshafts because what happens is if you get any sort of muck in there, it, uh, when you put the camshafts back in the car and the oil pressure goes up, it will pump grit into your lovely um, bearings. Uh, so uh, <laughs> yeah you want to keep them free of any grit and muck. I know this is all obvious stuff really but it, it is obvious uh, but then it's amazing how many people don't bother. Right then playmates um, the next thing is obviously getting the seals off the end of the camshaft uh, off the um, camshaft door seals off. Oh let me just show you that quickly those are my crazy notes on my valve clearances, which is, uh, okay, so what have I got? I've got my target, what I'm aiming for, my clearances uh, on the exhaust. And uh, these are just exhaust ones, by the way, because they're the only ones I'm replacing. All my inlets are fine. Um, I've got my uh, gap clearance. I've got the shims that were in there. And then I've calculated the shims I need to give me the clearance I want and then I've got the fun juggling operation of finding out that some of those shims I have because they're in amongst this lot. So by a bit of swip, swip, uh, swapping around, uh, rather than needing uh, 16 of them, I actually only needed six of them, I think. Yes, I think I needed six. So there you go, that's my silly chart. Anyway, uh, back to this. Okay, just for a bit of fun, I'm going to get Emily to do one because uh, she's never done these before. So uh, I think it's about time she had a go. Let's see how she gets on. All right, Emily is now going to demonstrate how to do this. So what you've got to do mm -hmm. is you've got to put the screwdriver. This is metal around here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you've got a metal edge mm -hmm. with rubber molded onto it. Yeah. And the way to get it out is you don't jam anything down here and try and break no. it out that way. You've got to come in from the back. Oh, right, yeah. Get in behind the seal. 
just leave it. and press push, press it out. Okay, but the way to do that yeah. is put it so that the edge, mm. that met, that metal edge, is on the granite, mm -hmm. and then you just jam that into the corner and mm. hit it. Oh, and right. hammer. Do that, it? Oh yes. Okay. Have a go. Okay. See how you get on. Get it on target. Oh. Perhaps if I can hit straight. <laughs> That's why big hammer is good because we, you know, you don't have to flail around with it. That was good. This is a little bit harder. <laughs> that was good. That was good. That's gonna go now. Come round. There oh, you go. There we go. Finally got a little bastard. <laughs> Okay, be patient, go again. There you go, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, I've got the neck of that now. Because if you let it, the flat, lean against that, it's mm -hmm. actually the right angle. Yeah. There you go. Well done. There you go. Oh. Now just the rubber seal. Hmm? Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Grab that little bugger. And that one. Oh, right. I'm doing both, am I? Emily does have lovely hands, really. Just not today. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, here are the nice new seals. <clears throat> Emily's not Emily's not done a seal before, so um, well, I'm going to show her how to do it, and then hopefully you're going to do the same. Mm -hmm. If you mess it up, I won't be able to rebuild my car this weekend, so no pressure. It's fine. I've <laughs> messed up enough things for one day, it's fine. So, what you do is you put some oil around the seal. In fact, you can actually see the metal. Uh, the, see the metal mm -hmm. there? And mm -hmm. how the rubber's moulded onto it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you put that around there. Let's have a bit more. I need it in a little cap or something. Yeah, I'll get that thing on it. The other thing, of course, Emily, is if you do this wrong, mm -hmm. I have to have all my camshafts out again. Thank you. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's it, that's good. There's that kind of metal recess though, isn't there? Yeah. So, so to stop it slipping around, put a piece of paper on it, a, a piece of card on there, and then the drift on, on top. And just go. That's it. Right, you're coming down on this edge, so you've got to make sure just rotate the whole thing, okay? Yeah. And make sure you come across with it, come across with the whole thing mm -hmm. about there. Get the center line through there, yeah? Go on. That's it. That's what I'm doing. Just keep yeah. going at an angle when I do it. Okay. There's a little bit of a... Oh yeah, you're going right. Oh, yeah, massively. Yeah, okay. So you don't want... Don't this, want that. Mm -hmm. You don't want that to happen. Okay, guys, if that happens, you've got to stop. Put it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have yeah. to do this. Yeah. I know. Okay. It's all right. Mm -hmm. The trouble is, if you try and so pull it out, it you can damage it. Yeah. yeah. There you go. What I've done, if it goes wrong, chaps, what you can do, if you've got a nice big heavy drift, is just tap it that side if you feel more confident doing it like that, because it gives you a nice amount of feel can't really pull it back out again because you can damage the seal, it's got a spring on it and everything, so... Okay, Emily.
Okay, go for another one. Yeah, try another one, sweetie. If you feel the seal, right, look, the seal sits on, the seal goes over that bearing surface. Oh, right, okay. And that creates the, mm -hmm. that stops the oil. So the, yeah, the seal runs on that bearing surface. Right. So what you do is obviously you lube, lube it all up. Yeah. And then you push the seal onto there, right. like that, and you feel it, yeah? Yeah. And then the whole camshaft then drops into the engine. Obviously, we've got to put our mm. rubber O-ring on as mm. well. But the way to feel if a seal is good or not yeah. is keeping it in its place where it's supposed to be, yeah. which is, you know, obviously it's over like the you've over the top of that. Yeah. So you don't want to go too far. You want to just be there. Um, you can feel the resistance on it. Look. Yeah. If you feel that, yeah. keep it there and just feel it. Okay. Feel the resistance? It's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah? That's what your water pump seal does. When your water pump's new, that's why you can't just spin it. If you could just spin it, it would mean the seal's no good. I see. Okay. Yeah? So it's got a, quite a bite to it, hasn't yeah. it? And that's lubricated with oil, so it won't yeah. chafe away. Yeah, it does have quite a bit on it. Yeah, it's quite... There's quite a bit of resistance there, isn't it? It's quite hard to turn it. Mm. But if I tell you that the ones that came off, mm. you could just like Ooh. do that. Okay. And there was nothing. Okay. Oh, I know them. There was nothing at all. You know, you could you could almost I mean, you couldn't spin them, but no, you could but certainly were they were just loose and they just fell off. So in other words, if you stood okay. the camshaft up on its end, they kind of just dropped off. Okay. Whereas oh, yeah, if you no, turn if you were to stand the camshaft up on its end, yeah, there's, there's no, no way, way that's coming off. Yeah. No. Okay. So that's how you know the seals were hard, you know, hard. They go hard as well. So this rubber actually mm. goes all solid and horrible. Okay. Um, anyway, folks, as you can see, well, it's a bit dark here now, but as you can see, uh, the um, camshafts, I've kind of cleaned them all up a bit. Um, so if I can go a bit lighter. No, it's not going to let me go lighter. Anyway, I've cleaned them all up and got rid of all the corrosion and I've marked them up, put little markers on them, which is quite nice, which is there, uh, little markers. And uh, yeah, we're ready to go, ready to put them in the car. Okay, thanks for watching.